I live in what used to be a normal, quiet neighborhood in Henrico County, Virginia. The kind of neighborhood where you don't have to lock your doors, but we do anyways, of course, because after all, these are some nicer houses and I own many brass, bronze, and silver antiques. A cat burglar would take one look and say, have I died and gone to heaven, or what? About a week ago, a very strange visitor came in the night and left a present on my porch and about 50 of my neighbor's porches. Don't worry, I'm not talking about feces. That present was actually an old boxy TV that must have been 30 years old. Not even wrapped or boxed, it was just sitting there like it wanted to come into the house. All of the TVs were different, but they were all old. That was what they all had in common, I thought to myself that morning as I sipped my hot cup of morning joe and gazed out at all of the TV sets on porches. Every single house had a different TV set on it. Some of us were kind of spooked at first because this was something right out of the Twilight Zone or something. Like all of the technology we threw away was coming back to find us. We got even more spooked when we checked the security videos to see who had delivered them. They were all hand delivered by a young man wearing a big boxy TV on his head like a disguise or something. Personally, I thought, hey, this is just some funny prank, but some of my neighbors were, let's just say, a little peeved off and called the cops to come deal with these unwanted gifts. The boys in blue brought a big city sanitation truck, and then they hauled away every last one of those TVs. Every last one, except one, that is. I decided to keep mine, at least for a little while. I thought it would look cool next to some of my brass, silver, and bronze antiques and would give me a reason to dust off some of the old VHS tapes in the basement. The TV on my porch had a built-in VCR and everything. Top of the line, <laughs> in 1989 that is. I thought it would be kind of fun and a great conversation piece when folks walked in and asked what's with the old TV and then I tell them the story about where it came from. Well, that was my plan, at least. I lugged that thing back into my living room and made a space for it where my last box TV used to be way back in the Stone Age. I plugged it in and then went to retrieve some dusty tapes from my even dustier basement. I decided to watch the 1994 Super Bowl again, which was not only one of my favorite Super Bowls, but also my favorite halftime shows due to Winona Judd. I even made some cheddar cheese popcorn for the occasion. I go back in my living room and turn on the set and there's just this blue screen with numbers along the bottom. The numbers are counting down every second and I don't know what they are for so I try changing the channel and nothing happens. I put in the tape and nothing happens. I get my wife and she says it's counting down three and a half years and I say what? That's nuts. Why would a TV be doing that? Why can't I change the channel or anything like that? I'm just basically dumbfounded because I've owned plenty of TVs in my life and I don't remember even being able to make them count down. Maybe it was set to record something. My wife gets the idea to go grab a pencil and notebook and we do some simple grade school level math. Uh, give us a break. It had been a while, but after about 20 minutes we figured it out. Basically, we have a box that is counting down to 2.22 p.m. on February 22nd, 2022. Which is a Tuesday, and that's a lot of twos. We can't find any Nostradamus predictions or anything on the internet for this date, but it is kind of weird. I think it's weird that it's all twos. Anyway, I thought I'd ask the internet if they had any ideas. Update. Well, first, I'd like to give a big thank you to the many people who let me know that I can watch the halftime show on YouTube. It was truly great seeing it again. Also, yes, I have seen all of the news stories and videos covering this story. You don't need to keep sending them to me. I also got a lot of messages telling me to open that son of a gun up and then see what was inside. Many people seem to think that it couldn't possibly be a normal TV, and I think that those people were right. I have never opened up a television set before, but all you need is a screwdriver and a little elbow grease and the back just pops right off. Fortunately, I did this in my garage with the door open because the inner mechanism was literally covered with a black, spiky mold. It looked like a large, glistening sea urchin was living in the darn thing. 
Naturally, I used a paint scraper on it, but it was soft and started oozing with some black substance. I tried cleaning it up with a rag, but the darn pieces pricked me through the rag. My fingers are still itchy now as I type this. I got real upset and started attacking the sea urchin mold with a screwdriver and then I used my shop vac to suck up the rest. I scrubbed the insides with some turpentine and it's good as new. I wish I could say the same for my fingers, but I can't. I plugged it in and the screen has changed to a kind of Mountain Dew yellow color, but the countdown hasn't changed. Uh, update 2. I've got big news. I was polishing some of my antiques in the living room last night and I had the old box TV turned on just to add some mood lighting. It was ticking away while I did my best to polish the brass, silver, and bronze treasures that I am so proud of. Then I thought I heard my wife say something. I asked her, but she said no, she hadn't said anything. Maybe I had just mistaken the squeak of polishing as words or something. That had happened before, after all, I'm embarrassed to admit. I just said, oh, I must be having a senior moment, and continued my polishing, but then I heard it again like someone whispering or something. Maybe the Keebler elves were making whoopsie fudge stripes cookies inside my fireplace. That would be nice because my wife and I can't resist whoopsies and milk. But nope, I checked the fireplace and there was nothing there. Then I checked the TV. Of course, it must have finally started receiving some radio waves, which is what it was built for after all. I made my wife put down the bronze candlestick she was polishing and come listen and this is the weirdest part. She says she can't hear anything. I thought maybe it was just too quiet for her ears so I recorded some of the sounds with my phone and then turned the volume up as loud as it would go. My fingers still tingled when I swiped the smooth screen of my phone. This is when I started to worry that I was going crazy because, no kidding, that recording on my phone was silent, except for the part at the end when my wife asks me if I'm feeling alright and suggests we turn off the TV. I put my head to the TV. I can hear a tiny voice whispering something. I do the same to the recording on my phone and nothing. Total silence. I decided to not tell my wife anything was wrong because I didn't want her to think I was nuts or anything like that. But later that night, I snuck out of bed and went down to the living room with a notebook. I turned up the volume on the TV as loud as it would go and it still sounded like someone was whispering right inside my ear. It was repeating each line three times. It was still so hard to hear so I pressed my ear against the little speaker area. It sounded more muffled than before. That's weird, I thought. Where was the sound coming from, if not the speaker? I opened the back of the TV right there in my living room while it was still plugged in. It didn't even occur to me to turn it off. I guess that is just how curious I had become. Here's the really crazy part. The strange spiky mold w was back. There was more of it, in fact. I bent down, and I'm not joking here. I could hear this message quite clearly. As I listened, I swear I could feel the mold tickling my ear like it wanted to get in or something. I wrote down the message, but you'll just have to imagine everything is being said three times. A anyways, here's the message. You are receiving a countdown to the creation of the I-bomb. The internet will be weaponized against you. For your own sake, destroy the internet for your salvation and the salvation of everyone replace your devices with ones from the pre-internet era these devices will be safe buy as many as you can prime directive make spores fill them with spores give these devices to your neighbors we have tried to stop electricity altogether but it always failed Electricity is inevitable. The internet is not. Good luck. That's what it keeps saying. Every time I get close, I can hear it quite clearly now. I guess it really was some weird prank, but it is way more elaborate than any prank we ever pulled as kids, that's for sure. We mostly just TP'd stuff. Some of it doesn't even make sense for crying out loud. Eye bombs and making spores? I feel like I'm missing something here. 
Is this a reference to one of the video games, perhaps? I'd love to know more, everybody. Update 3. Well, this should be my final update. I'm pleased to announce I've got it all figured out. I appreciate the help on this message sharing website, but I've got it all figured out. I've discovered how to make spores. In fact, it's quite easy. I know what I need to do. I shouldn't get into it here, but let's just say if you find an old television set on your doorstep, don't throw it out. It might just save your life. The strange spiky mold w was back. 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 Don't forget to subscribe. And remember, true pastas are the scariest pastas.